Welcome to Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is Block 11, Pacemakers, Episode 4, Pacing in the Pre-Hospital Setting. After viewing this episode, participants will review the indication for EMS pacing. Participants will review the procedure to pace a patient, and finally review how to troubleshoot pacing problems. Uh, pacing is um, initiating um, electrical potential that will stimulate contraction of the heart. Um, this is typically done through transcutaneous pacing in the pre-hospital setting. Um, in the hospital, this may occur through either transcutaneous pacing or through transvenous pacing. EMS is going to perform pacing in the field for uh, any patient that presents uh, unstable, hemodynamically unstable with a um, bradycardia. We would be able to then uh, immediately pace the heart, which is going to be a much faster route than uh, attempting to to see why they might have a bradycardic rhythm and, and whether it's a rhythm that, that could be affected by medication or not. But when you have an unstable patient, then uh, immediate pacing is going to be the way to go. An ALS provider uh, has the ability to do transcontaneous pacing at any point. Um, every ALS agency in Monroe County has a um, is required to carry a a monitor that has the capability of pacing. So we can do pacing for a bradycardic patient at any time through the transcontinuous uh, route. In our area, um, a, for pacing in the field, you need to have either a LifePak 12, uh, a Zoll monitor, or a uh, Philips MRX. Uh, all those are gonna have the ability to do transcontinuous pacing, uh, external pacing. And we'll give you the ability to set your, your pacing rate and, and the, um, the amount of, of electricity you're going to use. A patient may need to be paced um, in the setting of symptomatic bradycardia. This may be either um, due to uh, symptomatic sinus bradycardia uh, or an underlying dysrhythmia um, such as um, AV block. Um, it should be considered in all patients with high degree AV blocks um, including uh, various forms of type 2 AV block as well as third degree AV block. Overdrive pacing may also be initiated in patients that present with certain tachy dysrhythmias. Pacing is an intervention to stimulate the contraction of the heart when the heart fails to do so. There are two types of pacing, transcutaneous, which is used in the pre-hospital and hospital setting, and transvenous, used only in the hospital. Indications for pre-hospital pacing is a hemodynamically unstable bradycardic patient. Pacing is performed only by an ALS provider. Pacing is also used to treat other arrhythmias in the hospital setting. The procedure for pacing is that obviously you're going to hook up a uh, EK EKG so you're going to know that your patient has a bradycardic rhythm at that point and they're going to be um, most likely in an unstable situation. Once you have the um, the pads attached to the patient and and, um, and then in activate your pacing unit you're going to make sure that you're sensing your QRS complex so you're in sync um, and then you uh, increase the amperage uh, or the the um, conducted amount until you get to a point where you actually have capture of the uh, of the electrical rhythm at that point. So at that point you have electrical capture and then the next step you want to do is confirm that with um, mechanical capture by making sure you have pulses with every single um, paced beat. Pacing um, may be stopped in the pre-hospital setting uh, occasionally just to check and see what the underlying rhythm is at that point. Um, every unit that we have, uh, every monitor, has the ability to momentarily stop the pacing to evaluate the underlying rhythm. Uh, but most often you're going to continue pacing until you get to the hospital. We have the ability in, in our system to um, give the patient both uh, pain control and um, some sedative medicines at that point. So we can give them Versed up to 2.5 milligrams and morphine up to uh, 5 milligrams to to help ease their discomfort with what is going on. Pacing would be the, the quickest way to deal with a uh, bradycardia, but we also have the ability to, to um, give atropine in, in the pre-hospital setting 
um, that may or may not make a difference um, for the patient depending on if, if the reason they have a bradycardia is because of a block and if the block is high enough within the, the electrical system of the heart then it may not actually respond to the atropine. So um, from there we would go directly to pacing. The procedure of pre-hospital pacing first begins with obtaining an EKG. Identify the hemodynamically unstable bradycardic patient. Place pacing pads and activate the unit. Ensure sensing of the QRS complex and increase the conduction amount until capture of the rhythm is noticed. This should be confirmed by assessing mechanical capture or pulse. Consider pain control or sedative. In, in the setting of synchronous pacing, the pacemaker will be able to sense any intrinsic potential of the heart. If there's not um, initiation of the heart's own intrinsic electrical activity, um, the pacemaker will fire. Um, once it is fired, it is important to see whether or not um, this is uh, whether or not the uh, pacer is actually captured, or sorry, whether or not the heart is actually captured the uh, generated pulse. Um, this can be noted by assessing the the QRS complex of the heart. Capture is noted when a pacemaker potential spike is followed by a widened QRS complex. And typically this will look uh, somewhat like an ischemic QRS complex, that being a QRS complex that has an um, ST elevation morphology. Uh, patients with symptomatic bradycardia that require pacing uh, may be, or sorry, uh, may need to be paced at a um, higher rate than typically suspected. They should be typically started at a uh, rate of approximately 80 beats per minute um, because uh, patients with symptomatic bradycardia may have um, improper filling of the heart and uh, this may cause decreased stroke volume leading to decreased cardiac output. For this reason, the rate may need to be increased to maintain proper cardiac output of the heart. One of the biggest um, caveats I, I guess I would would give for pacing in the pre-hospital setting is that um, there's been many times over the years where, especially with the, the QA that I've been involved in, where people just are uncomfortable or don't want to actually pace somebody because they're concerned about the, the discomfort that the patient may feel. Um, if the patient presents that they need to be paced and, and that needs to happen, then just go ahead and do it. Um, it is actually the best thing for them at that point, and um, we do have medications that can help them be a little bit more comfortable with the process until they can have uh, their pacemaker repaired. BLS providers um, uh, should know about pacing is that um, patients that are being paced may look like they um, are in some pain or it's just, it's uncomfortable for them, but it is the best thing that, that we can do for them at that point. And also that um, it is okay to touch them and, and you're not going to be affected personally by um, what's going on. Um, there are a number of pearls to keep in mind for patients that are being paced in the pre-hospital as well as hospital setting. Uh, transcutaneous pacing can be relatively uncomfortable and these patients, one awake should be um, offered analgesia or um, mild sedation with uh, Versed. In patients with implanted pacemakers uh, that require pacing through external pacemakers, um, the pads should be placed approximately two to three centimeters away from the pacemaker. Capture is noted by a widened QRS complex with an ST elevation morphology may need to pace a patient at a higher rate, initial target around 80 beats per minute. This is to maintain adequate cardiac output. When indicated, pacing is best for a patient and should never be withheld. If internal device is noted, place pacing leads two to three centimeters from the internal defibrillating device. After viewing this episode, participants will review the indication for EMS pacing. Participants will review the procedure to pace a patient and finally, review how to troubleshoot pacing problems.